Good morning, it's Wednesday. We continue now with Acts chapter 17 from verse 19. They took him and brought him to the Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new teaching is, which you are proclaiming. For you are bringing some strange things to our ears, so we want to know what these things mean. Now all the Athenians and the strangers visiting there used to spend their time in nothing other than telling or hearing something new. So Paul stood in the midst of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I observe that you are very religious in all respects. For while I was passing through and examining the objects of your worship, I also found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. Therefore what you worship in ignorance, this I proclaim to you. So here we see the wisdom of Paul. He is not putting down their uh, curiosity. He's not putting down their false religions in, uh, in a way or arguing against them. He's just saying, he's building on them and saying, I can see that you're very religious. So he's being very clever here. And then he said, I noticed that you, amongst other things, have an altar to an unknown God. Now this God who you worship not knowingly, who you worship in ignorance, not knowing who he is, I know who he is, and I'm going to reveal him to you. And that was a very clever way of uh, proclaiming the good news to them. You see, deep in our hearts, all of us have a hole. And we know that there is a God, and that only God can fulfill that hole. Only God can fill that hole. And that's why Satan has devised all these different religions to try to keep us away from the truth. There is only one way to know the unknown God, who is the sovereign ruler of this universe, who created everything, and that is through the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, sin separates us from him, and nothing that we do can bring us closer to him because of our sin. And Jesus took care of that when he died on the cross. He shed his blood, paid our sin debt in full, sacrificed himself so that God's wrath would be appeased and we could come to him and become his children when we believe in him. There is no other way to God. We can know things about him, but we cannot know him uh, except through the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You see, he is the only door. He is the only way. There is no other name being given to us under heaven by which we must be saved. It's the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul is now going to take this opportunity to tell these people about Jesus, saying the God who you honor and worship unknowingly with your altar to an unknown God, I'm going to show you who he is. I'm going to introduce you to him. And if you open your hearts to him, you too can know him and you can be his child. That's how wonderful it is. God never turns away anybody who repents of their sins and turns to him and accepts the sacrifice of Jesus on their behalf. They become his children. Lord God, Heavenly Father, how gracious you are. How wonderful is your mercy. How great is your faithfulness. Together with the birds that are singing in the background, Lord, we lift our voices in praise and thanksgiving to you. We thank you for this new day that you have given to us. Above all, we want to thank you for salvation. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you that Jesus paid us, sin dead and full, when he died on the cross. And then we have the gospel, the good news, for God so loved the world, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so that whosoever believes on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So you gave us your son. You gave us, Lord, a way to become your children. And we thank you for that. And we pray, Lord, that you help us to be good and obedient children. We pray that we would reflect your love. We pray that we would have the wisdom of Paul when we deal with people, trying to show them that you are the only way. Lord, make us wise. May your light shine in and through us. May our salt always be salty. Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything. We thank you for this day. And we ask as we head out this day, Lord, that you would bless our government and those in authority. We pray for them. We pray that they would have wisdom and understanding to navigate through these times. We pray for those who live under tyranny. We pray, Lord, have mercy. We pray for the war in the Ukraine. We pray, Lord, have mercy. We pray for the war in Israel. And we pray, Lord, have mercy. We pray for wars in other places. And we pray, Lord, have mercy. Heavenly Father, we lift up before you the sick, the dying, and all who are in need. We pray for the lost. We pray for those who do not know you yet, who are caught up in false religions. We pray, Lord, that they would know the truth and the truth would set them free. We thank you, Lord, that when we are in you and when we are walking with you, we have true hope. We have true peace. We have true joy. 
I pray for everyone that listens to these messages, Lord, that you would comfort and strengthen them. You provide for all their needs. I thank you that you do. Thank you that you are a wonderful heavenly Father. And today we just pray, Lord, that you would take us by the hand, that you would lead us and guide us and help us to walk with you today every step of the way and to be the best version of ourselves that we can possibly be. So now, Lord, we've committed all to you. We join together in praying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. So my friends, have a blessed day. God be with you. God willing, I'll see you all again tomorrow.